Welcome to MMO Grinder Browser Based, where I take a look at browser based games that are quick and simple in design. Nearly two years back, I was introduced to an upcoming game that had a lot of expectations that it was shooting for. It was looking to be the first browser based game to be on par with client titles, both graphically and in content. It had a fun, rarely tread upon steampunk aesthetic, looking to combine the high fantasy of the genre's expectations with a Victorian industrial theme, all fleshed out by a dedicated story and writer. However, months passed, funding got difficult, and the developer, who was originally shooting to self-publish the game, ended up teaming up with a publisher, and things went awry from there. However, while the original title isn't completely there, the game is still a solid title and worth a look if the aesthetic alone has sold you, so let's finally take a look at City of Steam. City of Steam, as a result of the publisher acquisition, is actually published amongst a few places, which might make searching for the one your friends play on a might bit difficult, but for simplicity's sake, I am talking about the version hosted by GameRocks, available at cos.gamerocks.com. For a browser-based game, graphics are definitely one of this game's strong suits, making sharp use of the Unity engine, a 3D graphics engine made to deliver high-quality graphics in your browser. This game really shows off the capabilities of that engine, especially seeing how vast this landscape of the city can be, as well as the textures of the water and detail in the architecture, as well as the characters. Kinda. See, while the original designs of the characters during my alpha preview were heavily steampunk influenced, there was a shift in the design of the outfits to more reflect the expected look of fantasy games. It was done with the subtlety of a spray paint job, and the original models have not changed that much, so the new designs are far more low res than the surrounding textures. It's the only smudge on an otherwise fantastic looking title. This game is one hell of an amazing soundtrack, even if I don't know what happened to the original opening track, the same one that I happen to be using for this video. The soundtrack is very heavily backed by an ambient, almost choir-like vocals, combined with classical instrumentation but mixed with heavy percussion to further drive this game's industrial theme. It's another great aspect of this game and highly worth a listen, but again, I seriously don't know why they changed this theme for the opening titles. There's still plenty of great tracks to listen to in here, though. A lot of it comes up in combat to better drive the action. As sound goes, though, there's not too much to go on that's out of the norm, and it's pretty typical of the fantasy MMO genre, but there's a decent amount of solid voice acting to narrate some of the game's cutscenes. While this is a browser-based game, there's a small client version that you can choose to download if you wish. The GameRocks version will even grant you a few bonuses for downloading and using that client downloader. When creating a character, you can choose from several races, many within standard types of humans, elves, greenskins, and dwarves, with the humans having four sub-races, greenskins three, the elves and dwarves two. You can choose male or female for any race except the dwarves who are male only. When choosing a character, you have very limited choices as to how to customize them, limited only to a few hairstyle options. There are four classes in the game, Arcanist, the Mage, Gunner, the Ranged Physical, Warder, the Warrior Type, and Channeler, the Healer. When starting out, you'll be taken to a tutorial scene and you'll get a bit of story information about the game as the city of Denton is about to fall, complete with a pretty impressive battle of a giant demon fighting a massive mech in the background. Before you begin, you'll be asked to use one of two control methods, Relaxed and Hardcore. Relaxed plays more like a Diablo-styled game, giving you limited isometric camera movement and more simplified gameplay, while Hardcore is anything but to anyone who's just looking to control the game like a typical 3D WASD movement and hotkeyed skilled MMO. After a few simple quests to complete, including a train ride that ends in a fairly simple boss fight, you're taken to the refuge, where the game starts to play more traditionally. There's a few game mechanic tutorials that are revealed as you level up, and you can choose to follow the main storyline or take on quests that you find around the area. Most of these quests have you enter a small instance dungeon area, and while I say instance, it's still a pretty public area. You come across other players while you're inside. Each area in quest might require you to fulfill the dungeon objective, gaining a set amount of XP and shillings, the game's currency, and occasionally killing a boss monster, before you can move on to the next area, unless you just wish to leave. To proceed in the most dungeons, you'll actually have to spend a bit of your energy, which is really a pretty generous 1000 energy limit, and regenerates at 10 energy per 10 minutes, and regenerated by 50% to its maximum each day. Most dungeons have a 30 energy requirement. Many quests have an auto-pathing system where merely clicking on the quest objective will automatically guide you there, but those who would rather walk can easily track their objectives with a compass arrow that will display over your character. One of the more clever aspects to this game and its playstyle is that each class has multiple equipable weapon sets and combat stances, those being dual-wield, two-handed, and sword and board. Yes, even the healers and mages can equip and wield a shield. Each stance offers a specific bonus to that class, and as long as you're not actively using an ability or an attack on an enemy, you can switch these on the fly during combat. It's a clever twist that's usually class-limited, and leaves a bit of flexibility in the classes. 
Most gear in the game is class locked though, and it follows the fantasy MMO standard of color quality, with gray being weak, white being normal, green uncommon, blue rare, and purple epic. Upgrading your character is easy enough. When you reach the appropriate level, you can place points you earn into your abilities. You can choose only one from each tier and boost its effectiveness with each level until you reach level 10 and get to choose one from the next tier. I notice that you'll tend to have much more of these points than you'll acquire early on, but they do increase in cost with each upgrade. You can also boost individual stats in the same manner with the mastery system. You'll gain mastery points from the fishing and mining mini-games, as well as leveling and completing certain tasks. Then simply place the points into the stats that you wish to boost. You can also upgrade your equipment with medals earned in-game and mods that you'll find in the cash shop. You can also get a free motorcycle mount once you reach refuge that can be upgraded using vehicle parts. Starting out, the game isn't all that difficult, and makes for a decent beginner's MMO, so don't be afraid to give it a shot if the aesthetic interests you. As I stated already, instance areas, most of them at least, are public, and it can be tough to come across other players fighting and clearing out the same areas that you're in, but it's easy enough to get what you need, and the respawn rate is pretty fast, in some places ridiculously so. The players shouldn't ever feel too obtrusive, however. Since GameRox is a Hong Kong company only starting to expand to a global market, there's a lot of players that don't speak English in the game right now, but the game and features are all completely in English and fully translated. Once word of the game gets out, you should probably find a lot more players chatting it up, but for the most part, it's still pretty quiet. Chat gets normally spammed a bit, unintentionally by system messages, telling you who leveled up or what other milestone numbers, who's got a good item, who bought something from the mystery shop. It's all pretty easy to get drowned out. But so far I haven't felt the need to group up with anyone, and players can often be seen nearby and usually seem willing to help out. There's an auction house and trading system as per the norm, and PvP is handled in a pretty clever and unobtrusive manner. First off, those who like to hop around town looking for duels won't be making a mess of the place, as requesting and accepting a duel will port the opposite players to their own private duel arena, while their avatars remain in the town going through some simple repeated fighting animations to indicate that that player is engaged in combat elsewhere. It's nice not to have to log into a busy game to see it covered in players leaping around and taking shots at each other. Secondly, there's a more open PvP system for those who prefer the threat of gankers and the ability to gank. In some areas you can enter a field which contains both a solo and a PvP mode. Solo mode contains simple questing, but PvP mode will allow attacks on other players and even has rare boss spawns that'll appear, offering great rewards to those who defeat it. Having the choice to engage in PvP or not without having to separate the players by server is a very nice gesture, and I'm surprised more games haven't implemented a similar feature. The cash shop uses a currency called Electrum, and while the developer was originally very adamant about peaking the stuff cosmetic, unfortunately it didn't really stay that way. While the game features a plethora of cosmetic outfits, many of these have stats on them that, while fairly inconsequential at the later levels you'd probably want them, are still giving stat boosts. Also added to the cash shop are the mod crystals, formerly easily earned and combined in the alpha, but now available for direct purchase here. The changes to the upgrade system don't make these as much of a must-have as they used to be, but those wondering where they've gone can find them in here. Keep in mind a lot of systems are also level restricted anyway. You can also buy better potions in here, as in potions that'll instantly restore a large amount of health, instead of the heal over time that the current potions will do. I don't find this too detrimental for a few reasons. One, your potions can be used automatically once your health reaches a set percentage, defaulted to 50%, and the enemies don't really deal a ton of damage to you at once unless you're way outclassed or outleveled. I've managed to take on massive groups of enemies with my warder, and I rarely dip below 75 or 80% health. These probably have more use at endgame, however, but you do get a few for free from random intervals and random events and promotions. It'll be tough to burn through all of your allotted power for the day, but if you manage to pull it off and still want to get into dungeons, you can use Electrum to buy some more. Still, it's not as remotely as necessary as it used to be in other browser-based games, like Doctor Who or Spiral Knights, who I understand changed those systems anyway. You can also, as expected, purchase more inventory slots with Electrum if you so desire, but you can also do the same with the specialty earned currency Spire Bucks. It's easy to enjoy this game without spending a dime, but there's just a lot of options that you can pay for, including subscription. While I concluded this game is definitely a dream deferred, it's still a well-put-together and involving title with a lot of quality behind it. There's no reason not to at least give this a try if you're intrigued. Play this if you're fond of the game's steampunk aesthetic, colorful world, or at least want to play a more involving game that isn't swapped with long downloads, heavy computer requirements, and of course, since it's browser-based, there's really no problem setting it up as long as you download the Unity 3D for your browser. It's also a very simple game to play, with two control schemes that allow players to play more simply than other MMOs. It's a decent beginner's game as well. 
At glance, despite the nature of the cash shop, the gameplay is easy enough to get through without ever needing anything from the cash shop, lest you're just impatient to upgrade certain things, or need more energy to grind. I will say that the cosmetic outfits look a lot more interesting than the ones that are given you by default, and they tend to look better with the overall steampunk aesthetic. Pass on this game if it's not what you were hoping for when I started doing previews of it, or the idea of another fantasy MMO just isn't your cup of tea, browser-based or not. There are interesting ideas that aren't seen in other games, but there still might not be enough to sway you over if you're ingrained in anything else. Again, if you wish to sign up for and play this game, click on the link I provided or head to cos.gamerox.com. Steampunk MMOs aren't exactly a common thing, so while this might not be the final intent of the creator's work, there's definitely a lot of game to check out here.